Hi, let's look at the concept of traction vector and stress tensor. Before that, let's just briefly review what vectors are. Vectors are something which have magnitude and direction, but apart from that, they they must follow a certain rule of rotation. But for now, let's be content in knowing that vector v has magnitude and direction so it has components v1 v2 and v3 which correspond to the projection of the vector in the x y and z direction so any vector if it is projected onto the x y and z axis it has these various components okay so essentially v1 is v dot i where i is the unit vector in the x direction i in a vector form like this may be written as 1 0 0 similarly j in a vector form can be written as 0 1 0 and so on so what about area is area a vector well common notion is area is a scalar and it is however for the case of vector calculus we must treat area with not only its magnitude but also the directionality and therefore if we have a curved surface then the direction which is normal to this particular area is denoted as n it's a unit vector a unit vector implies the magnitude of n is equal to 1 so n is a unit vector which is normal to the face of this area so if we have a sphere then a normal vector will be pointing out from the radius and it has a magnitude 1 so it is also called as er it's a unit vector in the radial direction similarly if we have x y and z we can take a face like this so for this particular face the unit vector is this and it points in the x direction okay so what is the projection of a vector onto another vector if we have a vector a and we want to project the vector in the direction i where i is a unit vector then the projection is equal to a dot i ok so the projection of in consider the 2d case x y this vector is a direction of a on x is equal to a dot i essentially it is the component a x ok so what about the projection of area let's say we have a sheet like this sheet of paper now I want to know the projection on this plane so let me t have a look from this side and so in 2D it would look something like this here is a sheet and here are x and y so the normal direction of the sheet is this this is the same normal vector so the, the projection will be equal to if this is the, the so this line is the normal vector to the x axis so this points in the y direction so this is essentially j vector and if I translate this over here I have this so if I want to project 
this length this length i call as l on to the x axis what will be the value it will be l cos theta but from the construction we see that this angle and this angle are the same so this is also theta so what is cos theta in this case in this particular case so let me write it this way j and n so n vector dot j is equal to mod n mod j cos of theta because the dot product of two vectors is equal to the magnitude of the two vectors multiplied by cos of the angle between them and because we have defined the normal vector to of area as uh, the, the magnitude of the normal vector is 1 and also the magnitude of the unit vector is by definition 1 therefore n dot j is cos theta therefore l cos theta becomes l n dot j okay therefore the projection of this particular area onto the z so projection of a b c d projection of a b c d on x z plane is equal to area n vector dot j okay similarly if you want to if you want to have a projection of a b c d on the y z plane okay so what will it look like projection of this on the yz plane this particular plane will be this okay this fellow will be the projection of this area on that so it will be simply a n vector dot i convince yourself using these arguments okay so let's do the same exercise for the case of a tetrahedron of a b c so a b c has a normal vector like this and a o b has a normal vector in the i direction is minus i but we forget about the sign because we want a positive projection okay on y z plane projection of area a b c on the y z plane is a o b okay so area a o b is equal to area a b c multiplied by the n vector dot i okay it follows the same logic as this you take the dot products of the face normals of the two axes and you get the angle and because the length multiplied with the angle gave you the projected length the area multiplied by the angle gives you the projected area Some th something like this as well okay 
so area BOC is the projection of area ABC on ZX plane and which is equal to area BOC uh, pardon me it's area ABC n vector dot j and so on so in a sense if you have two entities whose normals are known the angle between the normals and the angle between the two vectors are also equal and that is exploited to find out the projection of one onto the other as easy as that you can refer to Krizik to get an idea about such kinds of operations. Okay. So we know that pressure is compressive and acts in the normal direction of a given area. So if we have a curved surface like so, so pressure is acting normal everywhere and these directions are also the face normals. But because pressure is compressive, the direction of the force due to the pressure is in the direction of minus n. Okay. So the force due to this pressure is pressure multiplied by the area multiplied by minus n. So this is the magnitude of the force vector and this is the direction. Okay. But in general we can have a face having a normal n but any force acting in a general direction so how do we find out the state of stress of this? So let us define the traction vector. So traction vector T is quantified in terms of the area on which it is acting, which is quant so the area is quantified by its magnitude and the direction. So because it's th the force is acting on an area which is oriented along n, so we give a superscript n and it's a vector is equal to the limit of the force acting on that phase divided by the area of that phase as the area goes to 0. So it is the force acting on, on an infinitesimal small area having a direction n. Note that the direction of the force is not n the direction of the area is n. Force can be in any direction. So now we had seen earlier that any vector f has three components one along x direction, one along y direction, one along z direction. Similarly the traction vector also has three components. So now we define the three components as this. where we recall that n is the face normal or normal vector of the area on which it acts. Okay. So let's have a look at what happens when we consider a cube. and z. 
so we recall that tn is the traction vector acting on the face width area oriented along n now let us denote the areas denoted along x direction by 1 y direction as 2 z direction as 3 this standard notation in fluid mechanics so this is the normal to this face and it is oriented along x so whatever traction vector is acting it will have a subscript 1 uh, a superscript 1 but each of this has a component so the force acting on this face in the x direction has a component t11 okay and so on so because this acts on this direction it has a superscript 1 and the first component is the force acting on this area in the x direction so it is t11 because this traction vector acting on the face oriented along one direction will have t11 t12 and t13 similarly on this face the traction vector in the y direction will be like this and this will be t12 1 indicating the direction of the area and 2 indicating the direction of the force the force is oriented along the y direction similarly this is t13 okay what happens at the top face the top face has a direction 2 and if we consider the force acting on a direction 2 it should yield us a traction vector like this which will have components this so t22 is the is the force is the traction vector component acting on the face oriented along y in the y direction so this is 222 this is the force in one direction but it acts on a on an area with the direction along y so it's t21 similarly this is t23 okay for the front face this is t3 pardon me t31 t33 T32. So this superscript denotes that the normal to this face, the front face, is in the z direction, 3, 3, and 3. So this force is in the 1 direction, this force is in the 2 direction, this force is in the 3 direction. What about the back faces? Let's consider the back face. For the back face, we have this as T11. This as T12 and this as T13. Now notice that these are the directions opposite to this. It's a matter of convention to choose these guys as positive, but the direction of this is fixed by the Newton's third law. Direction on back face is by Newton third law. So if we shrink the cube down to a point, it should be such that the action and reaction must balance. So T11 and this T11 balance, T31 going in the opposite direction of Z and T31 will balance. Similarly T21 and T21 will balance. So to have this, we have reversed the direction over here. Similarly for the bottom face, we have T22 T21 and T23 and similarly for the back face we have T32 T33 and T31 okay so in this manner we are able to define the traction vectors on all the faces of the cube but when we consider 
the case where the coordinates are the generalized coordinates so here x y z are the basis coordinates so the state of stress is defined in terms of these particular area vectors so cube offers that kind of a case so we define the stress tensor tau ij as being this the force per unit area basically but it is the force in j direction per area having normal in i direction so tau 11 is essentially t11 tau 12 is essentially t12 tau 13 is essentially t13 this is the direction of the normal vector to the face this is the direction of the force okay so these define the basis so think this through have a look into this figure try to figure out what traction vector is traction vector is essentially having the units of stress okay and that is why we could relate the traction vector to this so this is a so this tau ij is is called as stress tensor a tensor is a quantity which requires two indices so the first index is the direction the normal direction of the area the second index is the direction of the force okay so in the next video we will try to find out what is the force acting on an arbitrarily oriented surface in terms of the components of the stress tensor and the normal vector of the area on which we want to find out the force